Um, so uh, shortly we're going to have the board candidate uh, panel come up here. Uh, but before we do, we're going to let the runners up of the hackathon uh, give you an overview of their work. And uh, the first team that's going to come up is the Kofefe Kafka. I'm having to practice that name. So thank you. Oh, clicker. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I will not try to pronounce uh, uh, our name for a team. And let's talk about our solution. So uh, it's uh, egress traffic controller architecture. We were trying to regress regular controller with uh, Kafka messaging bus. And we set up um, in a Google Cloud infrastructure um, our environment. It was one iOS 6RV uh, router and few Linux Quagga instances just to reduce the memory footprint. And we start to uh, tickle around. So uh, my uh, colleague Nick uh, will talk about it in a moment. So how everyone. So when we look at the kind of the goals for the hackathon, basically was to collect data from the network. So we had a network running BGP, do something with the data, apply some business logic, and then inject some changes into the network. So for that purpose, we set up like a microservices architecture. So we try to kind of uh, set different uh, microservices. So each one of the members of this team could write on their own programming language. So the first step was to collect data. So what we did was basically to subscribe to a uh, telemetry stream using open config. So we will get the data, and we will have a, a processing engine that will basically do some parsing and then create a new message with some uh, counters that will be interested for someone else. Uh, in this case, we will just publish back to a Kafka bus, uh, let's say the data rates uh, the, the, and interface counters. So we kind of agreed on the message. It, it was just a JSON file with those counters, so it was a much simpler message. And then we will have someone, another microservice, uh, applying the business rules, basically looking for like uh, a given number of threshold that was crossed. So it can then create an alarm, uh, which was another method pushed back to the Kafka bus. And then we will then have another uh, microservice that was listening to this specific topic uh, that then will trigger changes based on the nature of this event. Uh, in this case, we wanted to not only use uh, the Cisco Service Layer API to inject or program the FEV on the router, but also do it through GoBGP. So you can either use either one of those uh, methods to, to program the routing table. So I'll hand it off. Yep. So um, our structure was quite, uh, quite layered. Um, and at the bottom layer, we have our services. And all our services communicating to Kafka. Uh, the, uh, the beauty of this approach that uh, any type of data can be published, and we just use telemetry one. Um, to um, trigger all the actions, we, uh, we separate and abstract our business logic. Uh, it was YAML-based files, um, kind, uh, we can call them rules. And based on the uh, current rules, we can um, try, try some actions. And for example, if we jitter uh, thresholds some value, we just reprogram the route. Um, to reprogram the route or to update it, we use Serviceware API. Um, it's iOS 6R uh, um, API to uh, program your RIB, and uh, not, not only RIB. And uh, my colleague Akshat Sharma will be covering uh, full session um, on Wednesday, so go, um, you, you can uh, check it in details later this week. And let's talk more about benefits for the, uh, this solution. Um, as I said previously, um, any type of data could be published to the message bus. So uh, we don't care if it's telemetry, SNP, or just syslog messages. We, uh, we can post uh, uh, whatever we want to Kafka bus. Um, our logic uh, doesn't depend on, uh, on the other layers. And we use the format which we wanted. Um, in our case, it was YAML. Um, we can easily replace it to JSON format. We can do some. Uh, API for that, and uh, we are not limited to any solution, so uh, we can easily replace it. And uh, publishing subscribe mechanism, it's one of the uh, typical one, um, which is language agnostic, so 
uh, some, some of the uh, uh, hacks uh, which we did uh, was in, uh, in Golang. Uh, some pieces are in Python. And uh, we are la language agnostic in this case. Yep. So um, uh, thanks for attention. If you have a, any, any qu question for us, uh, you can find us in the lobby at any time. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Basically, uh, the, the code is available on that GitHub repo. The technology we use, as uh, he said, basically is Golang, Python, gRPC, OpenConfig, and the service layer API, aside from Go VGP. So if anyone is interested, just uh, take a look at the GitHub uh, repo uh, or just come and talk to us. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Kofefe Kafka. And um, I'm going to invite the other team, uh, Hack Overflow. Good afternoon, everyone. We are graduate students from the University of Colorado Boulder. My name is Rishikesh, his Pratik, Ashutosh, and Tanvi. We are a mixture of network security and network engineering. So yesterday, during the hackathon, what we did was a trial version of self-healing networks. So what basically we did was, in a scenario where you have multiple ISPs, you would, have, uh, you would want to achieve redundancy. For example, if you could see the diagram over there, that's a draft model we made before starting the hackathon. You could see three ISPs over there where ISP1 is the main ISP, and then you have ISP2 and ISP3. But there is just a single path which is talking between the ISPs. And you have a redundancy path. Like, at a single point of time, either ISP1 is connected to ISP2, or ISP1 is connected to ISP3. In order to achieve this, we have select, uh, we've selected an open approach where we used controllers, and we've also used a model of router, which is a Quagga router. We've used Quagga in, because it's easy to configure, and at the same time, it's easy to automate. So in, in a single ISP, the model we used was the ISP would have a Ryu controller, and then it would have a Mininet topology. Instead of using a live topology model, we've used Mininet in order to simulate a topology, which would be an open virtual switch, and then host. You can see that the Ryu is connected to the Quagga, Quagga routers, and the Quagga is connected to the other Quagga in the, in the next internet service provider. So what we did was we ran IBGP within the Quagga and the controller, and then we've run external BGP between the different Quaggas of the different ISPs. So what's, you might wonder what's different between this and what is happening in the real world. The major thing we tried to achieve in the six hours of duration during the hackathon was we try to automate a redundant scenario. And how would it be self-healing? We have a Python script. We have a Python script which would actually pull the different Quagga routers to stay, see the packet loss and the RTT. And depending upon the values, depending upon the values, it will select the best path. So my team member would go with the rest of the presentation. So the intention was not to reinvent the wheel. So something like this you might have seen where you, know, you do a polling of the uh, pre particular prefix and then you might change the local preference for the BGP route. But what we tried to achieve was that uh, what we wanted, uh, so we have uh, like ha had a Ryu topology which is like an actual SDN topology using OpenFlow protocol and that's uh, what, what we were trying to configure. So what the script does is it, uh, it will continuously poll the prefixes, get uh, round trip time or some sort of la latency. So it will have a pert particular threshold value. So if the threshold exceeds, uh, it exceeds a particular value, then the route is d directly changed, which we are for using the Python script where the local preference is directly changed. So as you can see uh, in the last di diagram, there are like two paths for the same prefix but one path is cho chosen over the other because it has a, a lower latency. So this is the quagga of the ISP2 and quagga of the ISP3. So there also uh, we can see that for a particular prefix, due to the uh, late, late change in latency, we are changing the routes. 
also we didn't want to ignore security so uh, we had a prototype of uh, uh, snort ids so what it does is basically uh, we have the edge router a quagga router and if an unrecognized peer is trying to establish neighborship on port 179 or any type of malicious traffic is uh, uh, trying to reach on the edge router that can be like directly mapped and uh, tracked via the snort ids and the snort talks via rest api to the ryu controller so that will automatically dynamically apply uh, acl rules to the edge router to directly block them and we will also have like we, we also had an email notification system so any change in the local preference for any type of uh, malicious activity we did directly get uh, uh, email notification to the operator so what the intention was that uh, we can have a prototype of snort uh, uh, changing the preference for routing where the uh, SDN topology exists. So uh, migration from a traditional to a hybrid network is possible and that's what we wanted to demonstrate. And uh, along with it, we, were, we also had the plan of having a GUI where the operations team can continu continuously see how is the congestion in a particular network, uh, generate database reports. So basically having an audit trail. So that's what we tried to do. I'll hand over the mic to Rishi. So this is the current perspective of our prototype. In the future, what we were planning was we would have a load, load balancing scenario where instead of using just a single link in order to connect to an ISP, we would have multiple links connecting the ISPs. So one, would, one route would be a primary route for this particular ISP. Let's say we're connecting India and Germany. One route would just go for India, and the other route would just go for Germany. At the same time, the other route would be the backup for the primary route. So Instead of using just one route and just disabling the other route, that's a future scenario where we, we are thinking of implementing a load balancing effort. And right now, due to const time constraint, we have not automated the configuration generation. So we just manually entered the, we just manually created two different BGP configurations and used them. But in the future, we are planning to do the automation configuration using Jinja2 templates and Ansible. And we will be doing it in the next com coming months. So thank you so much for the opportunity. We got a great opportunity to learn during this hackathon. Thank you so much.